Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello there, you wonderful pet parent, and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. If you're new here, my name is Jessica, and through the month of March, we have been talking about holistic health and different modalities for holistic health care. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about essential oils because it is a really hot topic. Now, um, if you are watching the video version of this, I have a new screen overlay and I want you to let me know if you like it. Yeah, for those just listening on the podcast at the top, it says the pet parenting reset. And at the bottom down here, it has the social platforms that I'm on. And then Oh, I'm wearing black, so it's hard to see it. So um, I'm the Pet Parenting Reset everywhere except for Instagram. It's just my name. So there it is. I'm going to take that off here in just a minute. Um, but I want you to see it and let me know if you like it. If you don't like it, that's okay. Um, be honest. Let me know what you think. So let me go ahead and take that off. So today we're talking about essential oils and essential oils are a pretty hot topic in the pet world. Um, and honestly, I think that's a good thing. And here is why there are a lot of products that are called essential oils that one may not actually be essential oils. They could be like fragrance grade. So there is a difference in a pure plant act extract and in oils or fragrances that are considered fragrance grade in the, in the world of fragrance, in the world of scent, in the world of oils. And I don't want to get too technical today because I want to just give you kind of an overview, something very clear and concise that you can take away from today's episode and, and understand what is and isn't safe for your pet. But there are, there are one, there are essential oils out there that are labeled as essential oils that are not very high quality. So they could be from they could either be from plants that maybe were not, it, it wasn't the best batch of plants grown in the region, or um, maybe they had a drought year and they just weren't a good quality, or maybe the extraction from the plant to get what we call essential oil was done using certain chemicals. So there are different ways to actually derive what we know as essential oil from plants. And there are actually different parts of the plant, right? You've got the flower, the stem, the stem. There, there are different parts. I'm not going to go over the anatomy of a plant, but there are different parts of a plant that contain different types of essential oil in them. And they have different properties. They have different medicinal properties depending on the part of the plant as well. So they could, they could just be a poor quality essential oil, or they could actually be a fragrance grade, um, which, or, or they could actually be chemical compounds that are made in laboratories to resemble fragrance of true essential oil. So there's a lot to consider when we're talking about the quality of an essential oil. And that is what I want you to take away from today's podcast, if you take nothing else away from essential oil, is that the quality of the oil is going to be the, the best indicator of whether you can or cannot use it effectively um, to help your pet. And another thing I want you to know is that there actually are some essential oils that are not recommended for pets. The most popular one that I know of is tea tree oil. We never want to use that um, on or around our pets. 
But again, it's the quality that we're talking about. And the reason for the quality issue is not so much. Now, we understand, right, that dogs are a species of animal. Cats are a different species of animals. Humans are yet another different species of animal. And that is very important because the way we metabolize anything we put into our body or on our body or we smell, the way we metabolize it is different from the way that our dog metabolizes it. Although humans and dogs are quite similar in how we metabolize any anything we put in our body. Cats, on the other hand, <laughs> are totally different in how they metabolize. They actually have a lot of the same metabolic pathways that we do and that our dogs do. However, with essential oils and with medications, um, they use a different metabolic pathway, something that we don't even have, I, I believe, and I could be wrong about this part, but uh, if we do have it, we don't use it. Um, but I believe it's a, it's a metabolic pathway that we don't even have. That is why, even if you're, if you have heard in the past that, no, you can't use essential oils on your dog or cat more than more likely than not, you have probably heard, oh, never, ever, ever use essential oils on or around your cat. That's actually not true. That's not accurate. However, if you are uncomfortable, I would I would recommend erring on the side of caution, especially when it comes to our cats, because they are more sensitive and they do metabolize, uh, they, they do use different metabolic pathways than, than we do and than our dogs do. So um, metabolizing the essential oil is going to be different for our cats. Now, if you have ever heard me talk about essential oils, I always talk about Animalio and I'm going to, I'm just this quick disclaimer that I have absolutely no interest in uh, like financial interest in Animalio. Um, I don't sell their products. I don't gain a commission from anything you buy from them. I have no financial interest in them whatsoever. In fact, um, you know, it's, it's on my bucket list, but I don't, I have never even met Dr. Melissa Shelton. I have conversed with her online. She is an incredible human being and a one, I mean, just outstanding integrative veterinarian. And she is my go-to for all things essential oils. And Animalio is my go-to for all things essential oils, especially when it comes to my pets. Now, if you're watching the video, you'll see right now I have a book that I'm holding up, it is the ADR2, which is the Animal Desk Reference. It's the second edition. This Animal Desk Reference is Essential Oils for Animals, and it is authored by holistic veterinarian Melissa Shelton, DVM. I have read this book cover to cover. It is, it's not an easy read, and if you are not a science nerd, you probably don't want to read it. However, it is a great reference book. If you are at all interested in essential oils for your pets, and if you're listening to this, I hope you are because anecdotally, I have seen incredible results from using essential oils, not just with my pets, but guess what guys, you and I as humans, we're animals too. And I use these veterinary grade essential oils on myself and I have gotten some incredible results. Now, of course, as with any drug, right? I say I say drug as in like anything that we use that we expect some sort of medicinal properties or outcomes from, we expect not necessarily immediate results, but over time, that's where we often with most things expect to see results. Now, uh, over time, I see lots of wonderful, wonderful results with essential oils, but also I have seen some pretty darn good immediate results as well. So the first thing I wanted to share with you, Animalio is Animal EO, and you can go check out Animalio yourself at animalio.info. So that's Animal, 
E-O-A-N-I-M-A-L-E-O dot info. And again, I have absolutely, I, I have no business relationship with, with them whatsoever. I just cannot tell you, even if you have other brands of um, essential oils that you like to use. First of all, Animalio is the only veterinary grade essential oil on the market that I'm aware of. And it's the only one that I recommend personally for my pets or any other uh, dog or cat or animal period. Um, But it's a great, great, great resource. It's going to go much more in detail than what I want to cover on today's podcast, because again, I want to be as clear and concise as possible so that you walk away from today's episode, understanding a little bit better that yes, essential oils are okay for our pets as well. As long as we are, uh, as long as we know that the quality of the essential oil is the absolute best that we can get, as well as we're not using specific essential oils that we know for a fact cannot be used on our pets like tea tree. So I want to read to you something that is on the Animalio website that I found incredibly interesting. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but uh, Dr. Shelton is writing about how she came into loving essential oils and using them medicinally, not just for her human family, but also with her pets. Um, And this says, At first, I only thought of using essential oils as a replacement for the toxic air fresheners used in many homes. We had started to document clear problems in animals coming from homes using plug-in air fresheners, spray air fresheners, odor eliminating sprays, perfumes, fabric softeners, and toxic cleaners. Seizures, kidney value evaluations, liver value evaluations, feather picking, skin problems, and even ear infections resolved as the use of these products was eliminated. First of all, yes, I know we have talked about that in the past. Um, I just kind of anecdotally have something that I wanted to throw in with this. I have never in my life liked perfume. And to me, I, I never want to, I would never want to be around somebody that's wearing perfume or cologne. It's just an assault on the senses. I don't care how good a quality of a perfume. I mean, you can spend a thousand dollars a bottle. I don't care. It is an assault on my senses. I don't like it. I never have from, I mean, the time I can remember when I was a young child, I don't like it. I have never worn any. I have tried because like society tells me, oh, I'm a, I'm a woman. I'm supposed to smell good and use all these perfumes, right? I don't like it. And when I met my husband, he wore cologne and it was horrendous. Like it was not the worst cologne I had ever smelled by far. Don't get me wrong. But I told him very quickly after we started dating that I didn't like it and he stopped wearing it. And he thought I was the craziest person like ever. He, he was like, I don't understand. Why do I have to stop wearing cologne? And over the years now he can't stand it either. He cannot stand to be around somebody. We can't even walk past somebody in a store that's wearing perfume or cologne without looking at each other going like, and I'm terrible. Like I'm the worst. I am the worst. Like if somebody is smoking, standing outside of a store and I'm walking by them, I am literally like holding my breath and coughing and I am not shy at all about it. And it's very, I mean, sometimes you can walk in to a store and smell somebody on the other side of the store because their perfume is so strong. Now, again, these are what I'm talking about when I mentioned earlier about fragrances versus essential oils. Um, That's a good, uh, whatever, every one of us will understand as a differentiator, right? Perfumes are fragrances, not essential oils. If I want to wear anything at all, I'm wearing an essential oil. Um, that's just, that's me personally. I wanted to throw that story in there for you, (laughs) but now that my husband has, he hasn't worn cologne in, oh my goodness. Um, when did we, we met, gosh, it's going on 11 and a half years, he hasn't worn cologne. And now he is, yeah, he can't stand it just as much as I can't stand it. So I just wanted to throw that little story in there. So if you have ventured into the world of essential oils at all, very likely the 
even if you <laughs> have met with, yes, some essential oils are okay to use on dogs. Um, and I, 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 okay, really quickly before we go much further, um, I just wanted to let everybody know that I did pull out the animal desk reference on essential oils because I thought at the end of today's podcast episode, I would just kind of randomly open to a page of um, different essential oils and kind of give you an idea of their uses and how they actually are not only okay for animals to use, but actually quite beneficial. So I'm just going to randomly pick a few <laughs> different oils to do that with today. Um, but again, if you if you have ventured into the 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 world of essential oils at all and even if you have gotten to the point where you know in your research you understand that okay yeah i can use some essential oils for dogs more than likely overwhelmingly you have heard absolutely no essential oils for cats and or birds um and what's really interesting is that dr shelton dr melissa shelton has studied in detail with many different animals, many different kinds of animals, many different species of animals. Um, because she is a veterinarian, she has amassed a huge database um, of blood work and, as, and even on her own animals, as well as animals that she has encountered and animals that have been surveyed, lots and lots of data, blood values on animals in regards to the use of essential oils. So she has done her research. So she has done her research and she has come up with a line of essential oils that she personally gets to test every single one of them and make sure they are safe before they go to market. And so it's a small company and she's doing, I mean, honestly, she's doing some of the best work in the field of holistic medicine of anyone that I know or have heard of, right? Because I don't know her personally, but if you've heard anything, it's probably that absolutely not. You cannot use essential oils on cats and birds. That's actually not true. In fact, she has specific essential oils that are beneficial for cats and lines of essential oils that are beneficial for birds. So if you're a bird person, I hope you're hearing this as well. Um, I'm not much of a bird person. My stepson has, and his wife have birds. And I mean, God bless them. They love those birds and they are... They, goodness gracious, but <laughs> God bless them, right? I think birds belong in the wild. Um, I love to admire birds. I love to hear them singing and chirping. They're wonderful, amazing creatures. I just don't love them as pets, but um, that's for me. That's just my opinion. So of course, when Dr. Shelton started out, because of all of the cautions and warnings she had heard from the veterinary community on essential oils and cats, she had her own concerns and as rightfully so, right? And especially with her own multi-cat household. But, and I'm, I'm reading this from um, her website, from animalio.info, routine blood and urine evaluations calmed the concerns and no detrimental effects have been noted in my home or in the homes of my patients. In my own home, as of 2018, there has been over 10 years of almost constant diffusion of essential oils, as well as topical applications. What I have found to be mostly true is that veterinarians who were the most cautious and warned other veterinarians and owners not to use essential oils had in fact never used essential oils themselves. More problematic to me is that the oils that have been linked to killing cats and harming animals appear to have not been truly evaluated by the veterinarians who condemned them, nor were the oils in question available for others to evaluate. So again, Dr. Shelton says, what I recommend when considering essential oil use for cats is to choose oils that are used often, have been used with many cats, and to use them with techniques that cats enjoy. Tea tree oil, or Malaleuca alternifolia, is another feline controversy which fascinates me. I have directly communicated with people who have sadly exposed their cat to a poor grade Malaleuca oil, resulting in subsequent seizures and death. Conversely, I have met many cats and have witnessed firsthand a cat receiving four drops of Malaleuca oil orally twice a day, followed with blood work and showing no ill effects. 
I do not necessarily endorse the use of malaleuca with cats as there are many other essential oils that can be used in place of this particular oil, but that does not mean we could never use it. I'm just going to interject here. Like for me, especially if you're not using Animalio, don't use it. But if you are using Animalio, apparently <laughs> she has seen some cats not have bad results. However, of course, she's saying there are other oils that we can rely on for the same medic medicinal properties without having to go through the, is it okay? Is it not okay? Um, so she goes on to say, we just have to do so properly. Animalio calms these concerns as we only select oils to use with cats that have been used long-term with good veterinary safety data. So of course, there is a ton of information. I highly recommend you read through as much as you can on the Animalia website because it is just, uh, I mean, so chocked full of incredible information in regards to essential oil use with pets. Holy moly. I'm telling you, I have, I, I go to this website often, often because I forget you know, I've got a ton of oils in my house, blends that she has created. And I'm like, mm, what should I use this for again? Or could I also use it for XYZ, right? There's a ton of really good information on this website. So before I let you go, let's open up the ADR ran randomly. And so there are, okay, I just happened to open to the canine conditions section. And wouldn't you know it, heartworm prevention is, is listed. It is important to recognize that a healthy immune system, as well as lowering your dog's exposure to mosquitoes, is the best prevention for heartworm that I can recommend. Many essential oils help with both of these aspects, and while there may be some direct evidence that essential oils can kill a variety of parasites, the use of essential oils is not consistent enough to rely on them 100% as a replacement for traditional veterinary medications. While we have documented decreases in microfilaria, which are baby heartworm, numbers within the bloodstream in response to essential oil use, we have not documented full prevention measures. So there are first line um, recommendations, meaning use for repelling uh, mosquitoes, right? And then some single oils that she has listed. There's a lot of heart, there's a lot more to read on heartworm disease. Um, but she's saying petting, okay, so first line recommendations, petting or topical, diluted three-part blends for insect repelling activity used as needed. So she has a few different blends for insect repellents. My favorites are Away and Evict. I think she has one more, but Away and Evict are the ones that I love the most. I rotate them. So I'll use a spray, a water mist spray of Evict. And then when I'm done with that, I'll create a water mist spray of away and just rotate like that. I use that around, I use that on uh, my dog. I use that around my house. I use that around in my cat room. Um, I, I love it. I absolutely love <laughs> the, I also love the way they smell. Evict specifically reminds me of camping when I was younger, um, just the smell of it. So I, I really love it. And I use it around my baseboards, windowsills, all the things. One other thing that is really, really great that I found, especially with certain cat smells, it helps um, eliminate odors. Uh, now, this is just something me personally I have found and used. So I can uh, use it in areas that maybe don't get a ton of ventilation. I can add some ventilation, but also use a water mist of these with these oils. Um, it helps with uh, different odors as well. So I love that. Um, yeah. So okay, she's, and then she talks about canine supportive blend, which for Animalio is the uh, aroma boost collection, or if you're lazy like me, boost in a bottle. Apply weekly to monthly for health, immune support, insect repelling properties, as well as potential heartworm control. Consider addition of catnip because we know catnip also has um, uh, parasite repellent property. And I say parasites, meaning fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, all that um, repellent properties as well. So yeah, I think that's that, that was a good one to, to open to, right? Um, okay, so here's feline conditions. 
Um, of course, wouldn't, wouldn't I open it to fleas? Same thing we were just talking about. Uh, but, but her first line for cats is actually diffuse, diffusion. Um, yeah. So let me find something else. So we're not talking about the same thing over and over and over again. So, okay. Feline conditions, diabetes. Diabetes can be difficult to gain control over and working with a qualified holistic veterinarian is very important to fully address the entire foundation of the cat's health. Dietary changes alone have eliminated diabetes for some cats and is incredibly important. See the recommendations within the chapter on drug interactions for more information regarding the introduction of essential oils for diabetics. Veterinary cooperation is imperative for animals who are on insulin. First line recommendations, litter box recipes. So she actually has recipes that are created to blend with uh, baking soda to be used in litter boxes for cats, which is incredible. Um, litter box recipes, copaiba, I'm going to say that wrong, copaiba, geranium, and black cumin. And then uh, the feline supportive blend, which for Animalio is Kitty Boost, which is if I could only have one blend to use for my cats, my dogs, and myself, um, if, if that was all I could have, it would be Kitty Boost. Um, so Kitty Boost is a feline supportive blend. Apply as needed. Consider addition of black cumin and lemongrass. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot. So let me find, let me go to essential oil blends. Okay, so I'm going to the essential oils single section to tell you about, uh, let's find one. Okay, let's talk about ginger essential oil, which is Zingiber officianal. So uh, Zingiber is it smells amazing. There, uh, she has a blend called Zingiber Dream, I believe. I love, love, love diffusing that one. It actually remi reminds me of Key West because it kind of smells like um, key lime pie when I diffuse it. So I love it. So ginger is most commonly used within blends for use with animals for all types of gastrointestinal issues and has GRAS status. This oil is most commonly used for nausea, especially car sickness in dogs, and may help reduce stomach ulcers, H. pylori infections, intestinal spasms, and inhibit asparagus, which is a fungus. Ginger is well indicated in cases of abnormal GI motility, whether too much or too little. Ginger is also wonderful for warming and anti-inflammatory responses, as well as bronchodilation. It is important to note that ginger also contains anticoagulant properties. Care must be taken with ginger oil in animals who are bleeding, have a tendency to bleed, or are on any sort of anticoagulant therapy. The overuse of essential oils that have anticoagulant actions, especially in oral administration, can produce a temporary and dose-dependent increase on bleeding and reduction of clotting. Ginger is also wonderfully warming and helpful to muscular conditions. It should not be underestimated in contribution to animal athletes and as a musculoskeletal aid. So after that, she gives instructions on how to use it with birds and exotics, how to use it with cats, and how to use it with dogs, and then how to use it with horses and larger animals. So I'm just going to stick with um, cats and dogs. So for cats, ginger is mainly used within three-part blends for water-based diffusion, diluted applications topically, or within litter box recipes. Use within the feline supportive blend is most suggested. And then for dogs, it says ginger is mainly used within blends for dogs. However, ginger is a, as a single oil is used commonly for car sickness and sometimes may have a stronger effect for this condition than a blend alone. While I still recommend trying a three-part blend first due to the synergy of other oils, it is not uncommon to use ginger as a single for this situation. Ginger will mainly be used within three-part blends for water-based diffusion or diluted topical applications, petting onto the stomach in a diluted form, 
diffuse directly or indirectly, for example, placing a few drops on a cotton ball inside of the transport crate, or direct oral administration can be considered. Ginger is an excellent addition to the canine supportive blend to provide routine health and function to the gastrointestinal system. So there is a wealth of information in the ADR if you, if you haven't already noticed. I hope that this episode helped you to better understand in a clear and concise way that it is all about the quality of the essential oil as well as what type of oil uh, you're using and blending <laughs> as well, and but the quality over and above everything else. And Animalio is the best place I know of. They're, they're the only veterinary grade essential oil that I know of. She has done, I know it's been well over 10 years, um, probably, what are we, that was 2018. So she's probably at 14, 15 years, at least now that she has data piled up on how quality, right? We're talking about quality. Quality essential oils can be absolutely incredible medicinally as a holistic remedy um, in cases where it's needed. Of course, um, as always, I am not uh, saying don't use traditional medicine or that you should use essential oils in place of. No, I think um, that an integrative approach is best. So have these different modalities complement each other. There is a time and place for traditional medicine, and there is a time and place for holistic medicine. And I think they work best when they complement one another. So I hope this helped. Um, please reach out to me on socials and let me know. If you haven't already, make sure you do rate and review this podcast wherever you are listening to it. It really helps to get this information out to other people. If you haven't already started following the podcast, I hope you do so. And I also hope you join us over on Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. You get new content, exclusive content, behind the scenes, first look, all the things for as little as a dollar a month. You can go to patreon.com and just search Jessica Fisher or search the Pet Parenting Reset and join us over there. I hope to see you. With that, I'm going to end today's podcast. Um, Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day whenever you happen to be listening to this. And please make sure to give your dogs and cats some extra love from me. Until next time. Bye, guys. Oh.